Hello and welcome to another Gaming with Killer Tia. Today we're taking a look at the new fighting game for the S Xbox Live Arcade and PSN, Skull Girls. The plot revolves around a mysterious item known as the Skull Heart, an artifact that can grant any wish the hearts desired. However, it is guarded by a powerful warrior known as the Skull Girl. And it's up to you to defeat the Skull Girl before you can get the Skull Heart. And just like with any other final bosses in any fighting game, it's easier said than done. There are eight different fighters to choose from, each designed after a cartoon character you would expect for a 1920s animated serial. It may not seem like a big deal, but having only eight characters quickly becomes the game's biggest Peacock. limitation. The main reason is because Skull Girls favors a 3 on 3 battle, made popular by other fighting games such as Marvel vs. Capcom 2, instead of the traditional 1 on 1. What this means is that if you choose 2, or even 1 fighter instead of 3, then you will be put in um, what seems like an unfair fight against 3 combat. To be fair, the developers did do a fine job balancing out the fighters and the discrepancy between teams. For example, having a one fighter team be significantly stronger than a three man fighting team and a two man fighting team somewhere in the middle. However, I do feel the game would have benefited a lot better if it was a one on one fighter. While we're on the subject of things that need to be improved with Skull Girls, Let's talk about story mode. To be fair, it's not bad, and in some cases, a hell of a lot better than, say, Cartoon Network Punch Time Explosion, but there would have been a few things that I would have liked added. For example, instead of a static image whenever people are talking, I would have loved to see some sort of tiny little bit of character movements like in Blaze Blue. Also, voice acting. Now I know that a lot asking from a $15 game, but that would have made Skull Girls story mode a hell of a lot better than reading walls of text. Finally, why is there an option to add input lag in online multiplayer? Nobody likes it when it's an unintentional feature. Why do we intentionally want to add more lag to our online experiences? It makes no sense. As much as I hate some of the choices the developers made, I really did enjoy Skullgirls, and there is a lot to love about the game. The controls are tight, responsive, and absolutely amazing. The three things you need in a good fighting game. The graphics are absolutely amazing. The backgrounds and the characters mimic perfectly but from what you would expect from a 1930s, 1940s animated serial. And the animation and the fighters themselves would rival that of even Blaze Blue. They're so amazing. And the music absolutely fits the theme of the game to a T. No complaints whatsoever. If the developers of Skull Girls, Reverage Labs, takes into some of the criticism that me and several other reviewers are giving this game, they have the opportunity to create a brand new franchise that can rival some of the bigger names in the fighting game genre. But alas, some of the choices that developers made with this game prevent it from being the perfect fighting game. However, despite the flaws, I do recommend Skull Girls to anybody who is a fan of the fighting genre. Even if you don't think it's worth $15, I do recommend downloading the demo and give it a shot because I do believe you will have a blast with this game. My final verdict for Skull Girls? AC! Did it kill it here? Signing off? And next time, 
we'll be taking a look at House of the Dead 4 for the PlayStation Network.